the county class were the Royal Navy's first, and as it turned out, only treaty-era heavy cruisers, which took full advantage of the 10,000-ton standard displacement limit. Initially, the Washington Naval Treaty had proposed to ban all cruiser construction for a considerable period of time, except for replacements of old ships. This would have been hugely against the Royal Navy's interests, as they had a fairly modern cruiser fleet in 1922, albeit worn out by war, whereas the Japanese still had numbers of obsolete ships, and thanks to Congress's penny-pinching, almost the entire US cruiser fleet, such as it was, was hopelessly outdated. This condition would therefore flip the existing situation on its head and allow the US Navy to construct virtually an entire new cruiser fleet, which would hand it the advantage. For this, and a number of other reasons including trade protection, the British saw this condition heavily modified and promptly set about looking at a heavy cruiser design to compete with the 8-inch gunships that the other navies were now sure to build. Starting with the relatively new Hawkins class as a baseline, they examined single, twin and triple 8-inch turrets. The option for singles was discarded because this distributed the magazines too liberally across the ship, and they were almost as large and heavy as twin turrets anyway. Given the high speed desired, it was also considered not possible to use a suitably large triple turret either, since the barbette would be too wide in the narrowing fore and aft portions of the ship, a problem the US Navy came across in the Pensacolas. A number of turret layouts were also considered, including all turrets forward, as in the Nelson and later the Tonnet classes, but these options were eventually discarded. By using a flush deck design with a deep hull and new high tensile steel to save weight, the resulting county class were unusually roomy, which would make them popular with both the crew and command staffs, with the ships often being used as flagships throughout their career. The introduction of the monolithic tower superstructure, which was to become a Royal Navy signature, saved weight on having a heavy tripod mast as well. The design therefore settled on a main armament of four twin turrets armed with 8-inch guns, a pair super firing forward and a similar pair aft. Unusually, they were also given a 70 degree maximum elevation, which, at least in theory, allowed for them to be used as gigantic anti-aircraft guns. The secondary battery consisted of four single 4-inch anti-aircraft guns by design, although these would later be replaced by four twin mounts, and two octuple 40mm pom-poms, although final fitting of these smaller guns would have to wait until the mountings were actually ready. Likewise, the design called for a catapult and aircraft, but these were also not installed until later on on the first ships. Finally, a pair of quad torpedo launchers, one per side, rounded out the ship's starting armament. Speed, although initially desired to be 33 to 34 knots, eventually came in at just over 31 knots with a reduced 80,000 shaft horsepower driving four screws. Armour was another problem. No matter which way you sliced it, there simply wasn't enough displacement left on 10,000 tonnes to protect a ship against 8-inch shells with the kind of armament an engine plant already decided upon. Some heavy cruiser designs simply accepted this fact and went with lighter armour against 6-inch shells. On the counties, however, armour was thinned down to a minimum over the machinery spaces and the barbette was eliminated entirely, replaced with heavy flash-type containers for the cordite charges. This in turn allowed a 4.5 inch thick armoured box to be placed around the various ships' magazines, giving these areas useful protection against 8 inch fire. Although overall seen as the county class, there were a number of distinct subclasses. The Kent subclass was the first run of ships, of which seven would be built, including the Australia and Canberra for the Royal Australian Navy. Additional 4-inch guns and 50 caliber machine guns were also added during this production run, along with raising the funnels to a higher level. The second group, the 4-strong London subclass, disposed of the earlier torpedo bulges in exchange for better internal defence, and would gain a knot of speed as a result. 
The bridge was also moved further back, and there was consideration given to upgrading the main battery to four triple turrets. But although extensive work was done for this option, it was ultimately discarded, since the wider magazines would need significant changes to the hull in order to fit. However, the torpedoes were upgraded to oxygen-enriched models with better speed and range. The last pair in British service, variously called the Norfolk or Dorsetshire subclass, was formed of two ships, with minor alterations to superstructure and gun position compared to the London class. Modernisations in the 1930s saw a number of changes, including the removal of the torpedo tubes and the installation of a complete armour belt in most ships, generally 4.5 inches thick on the Kents and 3.5 inches thick on the Londons. The planned follow-on Surrey class were different enough to be considered in a separate video as a separate class. Two further ships would be built that were based on the county class, the Canares class of Spain. Although they shared a common hull, machinery and main armament, the Spanish ships had a notably different superstructure. One of these would survive into the 1970s. During wartime refits, a number of ships would see the superfiring 8-inch rear turret removed in order to free up weight for the usual World War II upgrades in shipboard systems, such as radar, along with a number of 20mm Orlikans and increased numbers of 40mm cannons, both of the pom-pom and bofors types, which also replaced the machine guns. A notable exception to this was HMS Shropshire, which kept all of her turrets and torpedo armament, and would be transferred to the Royal Australian Navy in early 1943 to replace the lost HMAS Canberra. The county class would see extensive service during the Second World War, with highlights including Norfolk and Suffolk tracking Bismarck, with Dorsetshire showing up for the kill. Berwick fought a duel with the German cruiser Admiral Hipper, although it came off somewhat the worse for wear. Norfolk would fight again at the Battle of the North Cape against Scharnhorst. Three of the class overall would be lost. HMAS Canberra would be lost in the aftermath of the Battle of Savo Island, and Cornwall and Dorsetshire were both sunk by Japanese carrier aircraft during the Indian Ocean operations in the early part of the Pacific Campaign. The survivors would begin decommissioning in 1948, and would all be decommissioned by the mid-1950s, except for the Cumberland, which was a test bed for automatic 6-inch and 3-inch guns, which would later be fitted to the Tiger class, before it too was scrapped in 1959. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.